For the YouTube and DraftKings audience, you can see uh, we have, like, the water that they would serve when you're being deposed. Yeah, I'm going to keep my deposition water up here. We need yeah, a picture. Yeah, yeah. All any, we're missing is a giant clear picture. In case you ask any questions, I'm going to whisper. <laughs> Your hand's shaking. I'm going to whisper answers. To, I'm going to get answers from Katie. I do not recall. <laughs> 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 um, Dan Soder, Katie Nolan, hi, thank hi. you for coming back. Thanks you guys inaugurated us. this weird format that has somehow not been destroyed yet by the many imitators who've tried to be you guys since uh, a lot of whom have been me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you with other men, you whore. <laughs> get around. She, she podcast cucks me. <laughs> like, who are you on today? You can't do voices like I can. I actually want to start, though, um, and uh, congratulations, by the way, on having your own podcast. Thanks, dude. Oh, yeah. Congrats. You're cooking your own pod today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm finally pushing something. Everyone's like, do you have something to push? Go listen to Soder. Yeah, still no from me. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. What do you got? January 9th. 9th. What? My semifinal of yes. Jeopardy is airing. Yes. Finally got yes. a date on that. It has been, people have forgotten I was even on it, myself included. Come feel it's the heat. It's been a long time. The secrets that you have kept. I mean, and at this point, I forget half of them because that's how my brain works. <laughs> Dude, ever since I found out that you went to college with... Vivek. Vivek? Yeah. He sucks, dude. He talks I about just, every he, time he sees a new story about him, he's like, Pablo, the fact that Pablo went to school with this guy. I like that you just uh, that said like that I was, he sucks. Oh, I like thanks, that dude. no part of you was like, I probably shouldn't say this. You were like, this guy blows. Nah, I've I'll been saying what, that's, he that's, sucks that's, for 20 years. I know. Yeah. Just that now people now... If that's like Trump. That's like Trump. I got old, old, old tweets saying I hate Trump, and everybody was if, like, "Oh, you can't say that." I'm like, "But I said it when he was just a guy." If the guy in my journalism 101 class from the University of Arizona <laughs> yes. ran for president, I would be very loud about it. Wait, I would like to know more about Dan's journalism experience. Yeah, it was short lived, and due to John Stewart. What do you mean? Who was I it? Loved John loved Stewart John Stewart so much. I knew I was going to be a comedian, so I was like. The agreement of me going to college was strictly just to get the degree. My mom was like, please just get your bachelor's degree. So I feel like as a single mom that raised a kid, I did my job. But I knew from the time I was like 20, I was going to do stand-up. So I was like, oh, none of this matters. I'm not going to use any of this. What do I want to study? And I was always like, uh, I don't know, media, like journalism and political science. Because those are the two biggest things that run the world. And then I was also like, well, it could be a cool backup. I loved... Uh, I loved certain writers, so I was like, oh, well, let me learn how to write journalism. And then I went in, and I was like, maybe I'll do broadcast journalism. And there was just this guy in my 101 class that was such a dildo that I was like, print, I'm going to do print journalism. Because <laughs> he was, like, loud. He was, I think, I don't think he was a frat guy, but he was, like, one of those, like— um, Frat adjacent. He was, I was, I was telling Katie recently, I was around one of these guys that— thinks they're the star but they're not the star mm. they just in their mind they're the star and yes. then everyone and you can you can see this those is people. vivek ramaswamy it's exactly it. the way you described him i was like it, that's what i said to you off air i was like if the, if the guy from my journalism 101 class would have ran for president i'd be very loud about how big of a dildo he was enormous dildo vivek yeah ramaswamy. and he was like <laughs> just to reiterate did, in a bad way yeah 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 not in a good <laughs> Not in a suction <laughs> cup <female> kind of <laughs> take care of the yeah, issue. As, as in the price on the website gets lower the it's bigger made of this dildo. Yeah, it, It'll it, melt it. in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a horrible dildo. <laughs> the real world came to the University of Arizona to like interview people for the show, doing like an open call. And uh, I remember going to journalism class. Shout out Professor Professor Jim Nitzel. He was mm. awesome. Nitzel? Nitzel. Nitzel? Yeah, he wrote for the he he was a, he actually wrote for the newspaper in town, so he knew what he was talking about. Whoa. He, and he comes to my comedy shows. Oh, that's cool. If he's in oh, town, veteran local journalist joins Tucson Sentinel staff, Jim Nitzel. Yeah, Jim Nitzel. That's from June of this year. Shout out to Jim Nitzel. How are we spelling it? With and, a C or an S? N I N Zol. T Z E L. T Z E L. So in his class, Journalism 101, I was working at the radio station already. I was already working at KFMA. He's got that voice. They just I, let him right on air. So I intimidating. skipped class because I got offered the night shift. I got to fill in for Greg Rampage USA. I got to do the pit, Ooh. which was the metal show. <laughs> the pit. 
Shout out KFMA Day. What did Greg Rampage USA sound like? He's the best. He's now he's Gregor. He's at the end in Seattle, but he uh, he's like a tall dude who's very fun. But he would get into it. He'd be like, "It's a pit," and so I would try to do that, but I, I couldn't do it the same. It felt weird. <laughs> it, it, it felt like it was our version of W N B C, but it was me going the pit, and people were like, you're, "Nah, dude, you don't do it like Rampage." Please stop. Yes. People are calling in. I was, like, it's, I was like, "It's the pit." <laughs> um, but what's funny is Professor Nitzel was like doing a uh, the AM station was having a mayoral debate for Tucson, and that's I, huge. It, it is huge, and I skipped his class to c- cover the night shift, and he was there moderating the debate. And I remember him walking by the studio window, holding a coffee and looking over and going, "What the hell are you doing?" Here? Like through the window, he's like, "What are you doing here?" I was like, "I work at KFMA." Ever, from that moment, he was so cool to me in class because he's like, oh, you're like... You're a peer. Yeah, he's like, you work, you work in radio. What are you... You're just like... It was weird. One but, of us. But this guy in my class came in after the, uh, the real world auditions and he was like trying to impress this girl in our class and he was like... Yeah, I just sat down with a beer, and I basically pretty much told him that, you know, like, I'm a party animal. It was just like he was talking, <laughs> and I just remember in my, in my desk being like... I hate this guy so if he ran for president i would i would be in the same position you are i would hate him people call me up with stories about vivek that i am now like just waiting to oh man oh. did you oh, did man. you see what happened okay because you were public about it and it, i was I very mean, public about it the which york, i loved the new york post asked his campaign quote while vivek doesn't ever recall meeting this gentleman <laughs> We wish Pablo the very best and hope he finds success in his career and life, whether that be through talking about former classmates as he is now or possibly through something more productive like creating jobs or what? building a business as Vivek has done. Oh, please. He, yeah. wrote, he wrote that. He absolutely Vivek did. Wrote that. No, it was no. Trisha McLaughlin, no, Senior wasn't. Advisory Communications no, Director. No, I bet for his Obama's was a little Lamy. spicier. And then Trisha, you said? Trisha. Um, Trishelle, Trishelle went through McLaughlin. and edited that to make went, it sound more passive aggressive. What if we say? Because I majored in PR. And I know how that works. So you knew how to soften it. <laughs> you Did know you how have to. Any, you must it. have had apples in your PR class. Well, it was just a lot of people who wanted to do celeb PR. I feel like there was like a show on E around the time that I was in college that was like celeb PR. It was like the women that work for like the modeling agencies and stuff. I think that was like really hot. So everybody wanted that. Day one of PR class, they were like, if that's the job you want, they'll pay you absolutely nothing to do it and uh, you'll be disposable to them. What you should be going into is corporate PR. Yeah. And so that's when I was like, So like oh, an okay. oil spill happens. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nolan of like has to damage be like... control. Oh, yeah. In a different that's what world, I wanted to learn. You're covered up for a water poisoning that situation. That was the most, the most interesting part of it to me. It was like what to do when shit hits the fan. So. That is good for your career later on. My PR strategy, as quoted by the Post, Torre sent a one-word response to the Post regarding the statement from the campaign, lol. Yeah, that's Period. Good. You realize this is leading to your Frost Nixon. That's right. I, dude, I have thought about You're gonna sit running for president? Ac- across the table from him. And just have a, <laughs> just a, an intense. That two shot. I, oh my <laughs> God, bring it in. Come on. Come on, make it happen. Oh God. You and him having a, a legit conversation. Because if you prepped about what you would like to, you know what yes. I mean? Yeah, yes. it would be very difficult to beat you in a debate. But I, that, I, I but it's not even necessarily a debate. Uh, just a, uh, uh, an intense yeah, conversation. In, yeah, it, which would, I'm saying, any politician turns everything into a debate. Yeah. We should also film, like, the prep sessions where yeah. you guys coach me up. I yeah, would, let's I go. I would love to see this. I think we'll this cross-examine is, or I whatever. I think this could be the event of 2024 for you. Oh, man, for we can sell it as a live stream. Oh, my yeah. God. Promo code, dildo. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Really Put good. it on OnlyFans. They're doing everything now. <laughs> OFTV, baby. Did you guys see Nick Kyrgios, tennis player Nick Kyrgios? Yeah. He's on OnlyFans now. Well, now they're doing this thing on... Doing, I noticed- doing naked? Well, I not yet. Yeah. Well, because well, there's people in Dan's industry that put out their comedy specials on OnlyFans. So I didn't know if, like, that... I, I never think they're trying to right. do that. Curios? I think they're, they're trying to bridge into, like... Kyrgios? Kyrgios. Kyrgios. This, he announced he's not to deal with OnlyFans. Um... And he is going to like post updates for his fans. Okay. Um, nothing, nothing yet about kind of an any uh, feet or other parts of his body. We getting. He pledges updates? to show fans his "quote unquote" life. He's gonna I mean, play, what's he's gonna play this? wiener tennis. What is this? <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna slap the. He's gonna. 
<laughs> He's a little ping pong ball. Have you ever He's seen wiener tennis on yeah. clay? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> hey guys, grass. don't forget there's a premium membership where you can watch me play dong tennis. <laughs> ping dong. Um, Get it? Ping dong? I like ping that. Dong. Like ping pong, but with the dong. Come on, guys. So my dad's a urologist. Nice. Oh, I he's retired, know that. but yeah. he still gets shirts from the NYU urology department. They love I don't know if you guys know this. Urologists love a custom t shirt. Do they well, really? Well, I would too if that my job was so funny. Yeah, if you're if you're working with wean tubes all day, if you're a I'm sure off? you kinda want Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a T. The P T? The wean I, I mean, so <laughs> the reason I bring this up though is the back. Okay, and so, let's see the back. I don't know if actually I you want to. you got to describe what the back is I'm for our excited. audience. For our audio listeners, Pablo's now turning around. It says, let's go crazy, let's, let's go, go nuts. nuts. But, and it's quoted, attributed to Prince. And it's a banana a purple bowling. Banana. A purple banana bowling. Okay, and the and I think it's a condom. And I think... Or, I think it's an inflated condom. That's what I was theorizing. The, 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 that this look, is like closer, I'm going to go slide over I'm going to say maybe it represents the bladder. What's this? Mm. Isn't that the, the, the top nipple of a condom? Not really, though. Isn't that the re- reservoir of a condom? It reservoir. looks like just like an empty blueberry. <laughs> did your <laughs> Did your dad explain blueberry. to you what the back of the shirt means? Uh, my dad had no had no uh, sort of like textual interpretations of this. Yeah. But I just like that they attributed it very clearly to Prince. Right, yeah. me too. Because you don't want to get that confused. Let's go crazy. Let's go nuts. Isn't That's it Prince. let's get nuts? You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Well, now it's 2016. Do you, get, do you just get this shirt? Yeah, it was in my dad's closet. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know and he was like, like he texted me a photo of it, and I was like, I'm going to wear this yeah. Yeah. in life now. Yeah, yeah, that's the merch you do want. Yeah. If yeah. your parent's job. If your dad's a urologist, you have so many good... And so those Shirts are Shirts that have penises on them without having a penis on them. Oh, in the middle, it's a Precisely. bladder. So people were... It's a bladder, but it does look like a penis and balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's it's the not... the kidneys into the bladder. Right. Yes. Down into the urethra. Yes, that's the family crust it's, over it's my chest. The yeah. most, it's the most <laughs> cock-adjacent merch I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the, you know they can't just put a dick on there. Right. It feels they like... They have a... to be like, we we can kind of put a dick on there. Mm. Uh, bananas. I bet there's a lot of bananas. But ladies a lot pee, of... too. Ladies do piss. Ladies is pissed, ladies too. Is Go piss. on, brush your shoulders <laughs> off. <laughs> you ladies know? Ladies take a piss, too. <laughs> Sometimes for money on businessmen. Well, and now that's... Uh, and what were you saying about OnlyFans? That's right. And that's why I'm saying, check us out on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> My Check podcast. out Katie's pissy page <laughs> on OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans.com slash Katie's pissy page. It's a soft, wet launch. We're done doing soda, then we pull out the tarp, and we make the money that bought those IKEA, <laughs> those <laughs> IKEA bookcases. <laughs> Here's the article I'm bringing. Pablo, tell them about it. <laughs> Hit him, Pablo. So uh, the headline is, uh, I'm, I want to get the... Uh, the citation right um, because it is app.com. And what's that? Which is I'm down the, with app. You know me. The Asbury Park Press. Of course. We all know that. Of course. It's just Bruce Springsteen at a typewriter <laughs> going, I don't know what's going on else. Uh, I guess gym memberships. Today, a factory closed down. <laughs> In sports. <laughs> In sports, a screen DeVito door slam. seems like a cool kid, man. Bruce <laughs> Springsteen. NJ Bill would allow consumers to cancel gym memberships online and easily. Impossible. That, that's a trap. Why? To quote Admiral Akbar, that's a trap. <laughs> Why? There's gym memberships are notorious. But that's what I'm saying. I think this is the government's getting involved. The government is now threatening. They're like, excuse me, you can't keep backing these people into a corner, which, to be clear, we were told explicitly to do. So Katie is using the word we. And we should explain this. We should. In a previous life, uh, before her superpowers, before the the spider bit her, (laughs) before the hilarious... The the funny spider bit her. She was selling memberships at Equinox on the Upper East Side. That's right. You got to explain, Katie, though, where Equinox ranks in the hierarchy of gyms. Especially in New York City. Yes. It is upper echelon. And this was pre, like, LA Fitness was just coming onto the scene when I was at Equinox. Equinox was, was the- Was Planet Fitness around, a.k.a. the bargain bin? Planet the Fitness. Ross uh, of bargain gyms. bin for us was 24-hour <laughs> fitness, which was like a block, half a block away, open 24 hours. And is that done? I don't know. 
I don't, I don't keep up on the industry fitness anymore. I, I remember being around. It's gone. It's closed. And 24-hour seemed- fitness was a literal thing. It was open 24 hours a day. Yes, and that was the hardest um, thing to sell against is people would be like, well, I can get this membership for a lot cheaper across the street and I can go 24 hours a day. <laughs> I can go at 3.30 a.m. And so we were prepared to, that's what I was supposed to say. I'm like, look, that sounds good on paper, but you're basically going to go to the gym at the same time every day. Mm-hmm. And the odds of it being 3 a.m. are pretty low. It's actually bad for you to go to the gym at 3 a.m. unless you're working that kind of schedule. Do you work that kind of a job where you work at night and you sleep during the day? Look, right, they would she's say right back. back into it. She's and then back. I'd say, okay, well, well, then let's just be honest. I think you'd rather have a gym that you can know is going to be not crowded. It's going to be clean. You're going to have nice equipment. Well, what are some of the amenities? You, well, Equinox? we've got these u- chilled eucalyptus towels available on every floor. Was that the first thing you led with? Because it was the thing that I cared the most about. I was like, <laughs> look, these towels are already cold and they smell like a tree. Yeah. Mm, you just put those right you on your neck. Koala you can style. take as many of them as you want. Did you ever steal them? I would use them. Look, like, the most I home. ever went to a would gym was when I went there. Them? I didn't. Hmm? Did you ever sneeze into yeah. it? Yeah. No. They're uh, wet. Well, that's the perfect crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like murdering somebody with an icicle. <laughs> it melts. It's it gone. Melts. No evidence. Is that snot or just eucalyptus? <laughs> <Just to laughs> no say. one knows. So I think it would sting to blow your nose with them. They were really strong. <laughs> Dude, you'd be one of those things where you go, I regret oh. this. <laughs> I regret <laughs> this. Oh, my God. It's in my f- Guys, sir, you didn't happen to sneeze into the eucalyptus <laughs> towel, did you? But you had a list of things that you were, I guess, taught. Yeah, we had a whole training program sell. that I did really well at. Turns out I was a good salesman. I just didn't like the way it made me feel on the inside mm. because I was trapping people into these memberships because it was impossible to cancel them. Um, we would have initiation fees. I don't know if this is how gym memberships still work. This was many moons ago, fresh out of college. So I was putting my degree to good work. Yeah. Um, it, there was an initiation fee of a couple hundred bucks, and then every month they would pay like $175 to go to the gym. 175 bucks a month? If you wanted to go to all of them. That was the all-access, again, at the time. Who mm. knows what it is now? One gym was 135 One gym. Yeah. So one gym is 135 175 Plus like a $300 uh, initiation fee. Excuse Unless you signed up in December or January was the big push, and I think you could get no initiation fee. Now— Let's say I'm in. Let's say I come in the door, right? I wish to be initiated. Jump us in to Equinox. How do you get out of an Equinox membership? You uh, have to it, You have to wait a year. You have to be there for at least a year. And then you have to go in and cancel. I mean, they really— got to show up. You have to show like, up. They make it like a Saw movie where they're like, somewhere there's a key that gets you out of this lock. <laughs> you have to cut off your leg. Well, at one point, it was during the recession, hence why I didn't have a, a job— um, and people were getting laid off, and um, people were like, "If I, it, it, I can't join this because I might be about to lose my job." Mm-hmm. They didn't want to sign and up for the go, your deal. And then you have so much more time for your fitness. So then, the, um, I think the company started to be like, "If you get, um, if you, I mean, I don't want to say a pink slip, but basically, like, if that you can bring that in, that's so and we'll funny. let you out of your. If you can like prove a coupon? they laid you off, we'll let you out of your a gym shame gym. walk to your Equinox. Yeah." Where you go, I can no longer work out here. And they're like, why the, they've let me go. Because people weren't signing up. Because they were like, there's no way, I'm going to be stuck in this for a year. And if I get laid off, there's no way I'll be able to afford it. And Literally so we were like, like well, don't, we'll month. still sign. You You're should like, still yeah, sign. Let's, let's turn that pink slip into a punch still card. Sign. Did you only get paid if they got signed? I got, that was my commission. I think I got like $12,000 a year. So n- nothing. Yeah. And then oh, you would get okay, paid so this is important. So off the re- of... So Katie Nolan as recruiter of vulnerable people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So by the way, the story is coming out uncoincidentally. It's December. Yeah. Presu- Go get, if you're going to join a gym, do it now. You're right now the best deals because they're high. That was when our high, again. This could all be different now. Many moons ago, but um, our highest quote quota was in December. So you were like doing anything you could to sign people because they expected you to sign a ton of people. And if you hit your quota, you got your bonus. And if you went above your quota, everything above that, you got like extra money. Damn. So well, it was like, and if you didn't hit your quota, you were Do you, you remember at all what the quota was? No. Like how many memberships? No, I don't even remember your phone number. I, numbers in my brain just disappeared. It is true. So. Numbers six, are your... Let's start with a six. No. Well, no, 303 because of the band. There you go. 303. Got the Colorado area code. And that's all that matters. But wait, so let's 
Sorry. Take it from, <laughs> I've walked into this Equinox. Which have Equinox you, uh, were you have at? You, I was at 54th and 2nd. Okay. Have you called previously? Which was previously? right by where I worked at Dos Caminos on 50th and 3rd. Which is, I mean, there's so many times in our lives where, re- we, a, where a, we... A, a virtuous cycle. I'm telling um, you, I know this sounds <laughs> corny, but there's so many times in our lives where we just missed each other. And I feel like it's that's proof to me that there this was meant to be. There is somebody who ate at Dos Caminos yeah. and then had to work out at Equinox. Yeah, I probably sold them on that shrimp quesadilla folded. Oh, and then I, I probably had my friend go help clean it up in the bathroom after they left yeah. the gym. <laughs> okay, wait. So, Had so, you previously called or spoken to anybody at an Equinox when you walked in for your membership today? No, I... I've, I've, You're a fresh walk-in. Yep. I am, I'm somebody who has wanted to be better about my health. We'll get into all that. Okay. I just need to know sales-wise yeah, yeah, if yeah. you've spoke... Because so many times... We had this guy, Andre, who was one of the salesmen at our Equinox. Who had He was like a an institution at Equinox. He'd been yeah. there since I feel like it opened. But he wasn't like beloved by the company. And I wondered why. Because he sold so many memberships. It's because he didn't do it the Equinox way. He just cast a very wide net and with whoever lead came in. generation. And then whenever anybody would come in, it would be, my, Katie, you're up for a walk-in. Here's a walk-in, and I'd get all excited, and then they'd look in the in the. Luckily, if they caught it early, they would go straight to Andre. But sometimes I would get through the whole tour, oh, no. the whole sales pitch, and then I would put their name into the system and be like, "So you spoke with Andre previously?" And they were like, <laughs> "Yeah, oh, that's right, I did." And I'm like, "Let's get you signed up." And then Andre would stand outside oh, my office with a big no. smile on his because that was his sale now. But anyway, if you'd never spoken to anybody and you walked into, I got I gotta say, I spoke to Andre. Oh. Let me just walk. But see, if you say it early, I go, let me there just you bring go. you over to Andre. Oh, and then he would huff and puff. Office. He hated. I will sign you <laughs> up. Okay. It was Andre the Giant. Thank you. <laughs> Tiny little Katie. <laughs> You're going to love the uh, eucalyptus towels. <laughs> <laughs> but Andre sucked at like the tour and stuff. He didn't like doing any of the schmoozing, which was the only part I was good at. Andre was a strategist, though. Yeah, Andre was a. He wanted you to have to do all the he work. He wanted to pee on every possible tree. That's right. He got him too. He, huh? had a, he was a urologist of a of a salesman. <laughs> and they didn't like him. The company didn't. Well, like they him. did. They liked the numbers, but they, he wasn't held up as like a. This is our greatest salesman because he wasn't a good salesman. So Chico. that's the skill, though. The salesmanship skill is the thing that fascinates me most about Katie Dolan, Equinox salesperson. Yeah. yeah. Because. If I'm coming in cold off the street, yeah. it's December, I'm self-conscious, but yeah. I'm obviously very lazy. Yeah. How are you possibly convincing me to drop all of the money you've described? Okay, I mean, you want to know? Yeah. I'd take yeah. them on a walk. of the. It was three floors, so I would show them all the different— I would ask them about their fitness goals. I would ask them about their experience with going to the gym and if they never went before. Would you ever prod or poke them? Mm, no. Kino Escalate. I'll sign you up. No. <laughs> never do. You mean like touch their problem areas? Yeah, I'd go like, yeah. Yeah, we can, get, we can fix that. No. <laughs> okay. I've got these was, calipers on me. I mean, just take some I quick was, measurements. I was more He's like gorgeous. the, I yeah. found a thing to relate to. There was one woman <laughs> that I, people. <laughs> that was like very rich. And I still, to this day, I look back on this interaction. I'm like, what was that lady? She was very rich and she was, um, wanted a gym membership. And then she liked me by the end of it. And she, um, she was like, I just am afraid I won't ever go, and uh, I'm afraid I'll sign up for this membership and I won't ever go. And my a main thing I always went to was if you're spending $135 on it, you'll go. Yeah. If you spend 20 bucks on it, you won't go. Mm. But $135, that's an investment in yourself. Mm. That's an investment in your health. Yeah. You're holding yourself Giving accountable. You will speech. go. I'm reaching for my wallet. And this lady said she still wouldn't go, and I said, here's how about this? If I If we go a week and I don't see you, I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll go to the gym with you. I'll come work out next to you on my lunch break. We'll go on the days that I can go. I'll make sure you're here. If we don't see you, I'll call you. I will find you. And she was like, okay. And then this lady became like my friend. She gave me her credit card. She treated me like her assistant. One day she took me to that Fuerza Bruta. Remember that um, show in Union Square? I think it was called Fuerza Bruta. I could be making this up. Fuerza Bruta is a band. Um, It's a postmodern theater show that premiered in Buenos Aires in 2005. (laughs) One night, she just took me. We went on this trip. <laughs> we went to Fuerza Bruta. We went <laughs> to her apartment. Mama? I remember it was raining and my socks got wet. I still have these socks that this lady gave me that night. Could not tell you her name. Could not tell you how I ended up, why I said yes to any of this. But I went, so it's like a live performance yeah, that they do yeah, right yeah. in front of you. It's kind of like York. a small Cirque du Soleil. Do you think type she, re- how old was she? Oh, I'm bad at this. But at I would say time, maybe would you 50s. Say in her 50s? Maybe. Do you think there's an off chance that on January 9th, She'll be watching Celebrity Jeopardy, and she'll be like, "That's oh, my Katie. My That's Wet God. Sock Katie." That's 
That's my. That's Equinox Katie. I took her to a performance. She wrote Wait, the big long Buddha. letter on the back of a receipt that, about how I should be promoted within Equinox. She was a very sweet woman. But that's my. That's why I couldn't handle it emotionally. Yeah. I signed yeah. enough people up for the gym, and I'm like, I got seven people who didn't show up this week. I have to call them. Yeah. I have to let them know I care. You don't have the thing in you that can shut off. That's that like, oh, part. I sold you that, but yeah. I'm not going to do. I right. can't make a campaign promise and then not follow through. Unlike a real world cast member, you were there to make friends. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was there for the wrong reasons, <laughs> yeah. which was to be friendly with everybody. So but you had. You, but it just sounds like you had. A, a, a methodology. We were given like, um, I forget what they were called, but we practiced like when p- somebody, you have to get, it's sounding you have to Scientological, no, the more that you have I to hear no seven times before you can let them out of your office. You can't wow. accept no wow. until Man seven, the no the seven means lock, no <laughs> if you say no button, seven dude, times. Get them in. <laughs> No means yes until seven. <laughs> it's like Will Ferrell in uh, The Spy Who Shagged Me, where he goes, damn, seven times. You know, and he goes, three <laughs> times, damn it. <laughs> really, let me out. No, let me out. No. And then you get to seven, you're like, all right, It go. got to the point where the, for people like me, you would look for anything that sounded even kind of like a no, and then like, I count that. That was yeah. one. Because That's, I didn't want to have to act. Getting somebody to say no uh, seven times, you it's like um the cable really people when they called me. You start to feel crazy where you're like, I don't want this cancel this. I had people get to the point where when they were like, Are, is there anything I can say to get out of this office? And I was like, that helps. That's six. <laughs> that is nuts. Six. It's Closer, like, warmer. Closer. Like, well, you could call State Senator Gordon Johnson. Yeah. Because so, apparently what's the, in, so they're going to make a law pass that only in New Jersey, right? I assume. I, I believe which they is, will begin which is a in big New Jersey. Gym, for gyms. It's a big gym state. Is that right? Jim Tam Laundry. Yeah, Jim Tam Laundry. Is, oh, of course. GTL. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, if you're Jersey, Jersey gyms are on a different level. Yeah, Jersey Mike's, I believe they're called. <laughs> but they just the amount of I it, it clearly carbs. was such a problem that a politician in New Jersey was like, was hey, like, listen, I listen, I'm trapped in three different ones, bro. All right, and I need a different one for my power lifting, for my <laughs> to get toned, to get strength. So they finally got it. They where, should make it. it I should just be. like how, you should be able to call. Well, why why is Kansas? I mean. Canceling a gym membership should not need to be like a Jason Statham movie. Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. Where he's like, you've only got five no's. Two more, maybe I'll let you out of the office. <laughs> Sorry, you've got to blast your quads on Tuesday. Or it ain't working. <laughs> Do you want to try the eucalyptus leaves? <laughs> They're unbelievable. <laughs> We want to talk about um, death and artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. That's the article Dan's bringing. So, That's Pablo, right. why don't you tell us what Dan's yeah, yeah, article Yeah, Dan, says. thank you so much for bringing this article. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been deep in the research. It's called Using AI to Talk to the Dead. And uh, the subhead says, some people are using artificial intelligence chatbots to create avatars of departed loved ones. It's a source of comfort for some, but it makes others a little squeamish. I'm others. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I'd feel. Because I think one of the things in death is you forget, or it used to be before this, you forgot what their voice sounded like. Um, If you had anyone die that you loved before the year 2000, it's very rare that you have recordings of their voices because Mm. cell phones weren't prominent, social media wasn't around. You just, either you had an answering machine with their voice on it or uh, home videos but you didn't really have, and I think when you lose people, you there's a part of you that wants to hear their voice, but then there's a part of you that understands that part of loss is like forgetting what their voice sounds like. So this is a very interesting article to me because it's like, do would I want to know? But I would immediately, this is going to seem like a dark comparison, but it's true. I wouldn't like talking to someone that I've lost through AI because... It would be the feeling of like getting a prostitute where you're like, this isn't real. Yeah. Mm. This isn't the, the you're, you're doing this because I'm paying you. Right. You know, with AI, you're like, you're a computer program. You aren't actually my dad. You don't dad. really like, you don't love me. But you don't, you aren't proud is, of me, pal. There's a big hankering for me just to type in one simple thing. I'm proud of you, son. Just to get <laughs> oh, it once. Man. And then you're like, let's go home. <laughs> you know, I would just need one it. sentence to shut it down. And I'd be like, let's shut I'm proud of you, son. Go 49ers. And then you're like, 
Let's bang, go. Bang, bang, <laughs> niner gang. <laughs> go with the, yeah, see, bang, niner gang. Modern phrases. Like, Let's go. <laughs> to a cameo of your dad. Yeah. Bang, 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 niner. Yeah. <laughs> bang, bang, niner gang. But I, I'm intrigued by it, but I don't think I would do it. So it's video and audio? So, yeah. So the way it works in this company is called Storyfile. About 5,000 people have made profiles. That's so not far. a lot. Um, among them was the actor Ed Asner, who was interviewed eight weeks before his death in 2021. Um, and his son, Matt Asner, uh, yeah, th- to answer the question, was stunned to see his father looking at him and appearing to answer questions. Uh-uh. Um, and so he sensed like some replication because AI is now increasingly sophisticated, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Every a- day. personality that he recognized, um, or at the very least, something that fooled him enough neurologically to. Um, be at the very least um, feeling like, quote, this man that I really missed, my best friend, was there, end quote. I mean, I think without getting too philosophical, I think there's uh, there, there you're doing damage in the process of accepting the death by keeping this around. It's well, so, almost like— uh, That's what we talked about with the pets. And, right. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I don't want to be mean. What? But in a little bit, this is like the Nicorette gum of death. Where you're <laughs> yeah. like, when you quit cigarettes— You're not really you quitting You have to it. quit cigarettes. Mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm. not really quitting if you're using Nicorette gum. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. like still kind of keeping it alive a little sure. bit and not in the way of that it was. Sure. So it's a pretty it good would, slogan for story file, though. Yeah. The, the, Nicorette the Nicorette of death. Of death. <laughs> yeah. Chew on this. Chew on this. See if they don't use chew on this. <laughs> They're leaving money on the table. You do it on an airplane. Yeah, yeah. but it, it it just feels like it would just be too weird. It would be like, um, I don't know, because so, you, you have to go through the stages of grief in order to get over it. This, I feel like, would, would get in screw the way all that. that up. I also feel like at what point um, do we go, have you seen Black Mirror? It's getting <laughs> at close. what point do you go like, Oh, oh, this is kind of close to the thing that was depicted in a very dystopian uh, yeah. television program. <clears throat> We're starting to reach this point with technology where they're going like, never be inconvenienced, never be upset. Yeah. Never. And you're like, but that's part of life. Right. Never life feel is, your feelings. Right. Hey, you're supposed to feel fear. You're supposed to feel sadness. You're supposed to feel grief. You're supposed to feel anxiety. You're not supposed to feel anxiety all the time. You're not supposed to feel it all the time. But there is something of like, well, you know, um, deal with death because it, it, it happens to everybody. Mm. And and this idea of keeping people around, I really love the fact that before Robin Williams, you know, un- unfortunately killed himself, he signed this thing that was like, my likeness will not be used mm. for at least 50 that. years. He was like, no commercials, nothing like that. And his children have upheld that and been like, Hey, you're not going to use my dad in an Apple commercial. You're not going to use my dad in all this stuff where, because it's my dad and I don't want you, because this is inevitably what it's going to lead to, which is marketing and selling of through dead people that you have a fondness for. Yes. Uh, and as we're kind of the theme of this podcast episode is salesmen doing yes. whatever the fuck you need to do to get the sale done. This, they will use it for that. Right. So the way this works, by the way, is that you have the person before they die uh, sit for these tapings. Oh, okay. So, so they it's not just like they don't just so scrape is, together stuff. Well, I think at have. some point they, they will, will be able point. to, or it's just not required for you to show up and like. They've already actually... got to the point where they're like, "Hey, if you give me a minute of this person, we can replicate their voice." So it will it'll get out of control. Right. But this whole but the instinct towards wanting to communicate with the dead in this way. It turns out that there was also a, a fascinating other side note in terms of like the history of people trying to uh, commune with spirits. Um, Harry Houdini um, had a really close friendship apparently with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Okay. Author of Sherlock Holmes and so forth. Sure. sure. Houdini was like, this is bullshit. Like this won't exist. This doesn't work. Doesn't make any sense. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle disagreed with him so much that their friendship broke apart. What won't work? The idea of we're going to get to actually speak to those in the afterlife. That we and should invest Danny time. And was on the side of that shit ain't going to work. Yes. Which is crazy because he's a magic man. Exactly. Well, but he's also a, a lot man. of magic is, is knowing how to trick people into thinking something is mm. happening when it's not. Can we also bring up the fact that Harry Houdini had quads on him? He did. Did he? Quadzilla, well dude. There is a picture of him jumping into the Boston Harbor Yo. with chains on. Yes. Show, I mean, this guy. We're going to put this Nick on screen Bosa for legs. YouTube and the DraftKings all I'm Network. Saying is, li- <laughs> all I'm saying is line up Harry Houdini as an edge rusher 
Good luck. You got three <laughs> seconds to get rid of Dude. that ball. <laughs> Harry Houdini's gripping, ripping, and he's taking down Justin Herbert. Wild. Yeah, exactly he's coming right. out. He's making this play disappear. You better put a tight end on him. You better put someone to hit Harry off the line. <laughs> Because look at those legs. That man. Damn. Yeah, dude. Look at that. He's got the fold over. Yeah, yeah. What's he, it called when you can see all the veins? Varicose. He's vas- vascular. vascular. He's very vascular. vascular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Damn. Dude, Harry Houdini was jacked. He really was. And also, you could tell that water was pretty cold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wear a cup. That's for sure. Yeah, well, I don't know if he is. Yeah, I, he probably wishes he had a eucalyptus towel over that part. It's like yeah. Harry Houdini had some stuff disappear he didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> like, Harry Tankini. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I get I get him being He was like, a grower, okay? Yeah, yeah. He goes, for my next trick. Ta-da! <laughs> Check That's this out. <laughs> Whenever he got a boner, he went, ta-da! <laughs> oh, why, Harry, you are a magician. <laughs> Wait, so I, but you said something that was very vulnerable, and I don't want to pry, although I know you've talked about some of this on stage. Pry. Pry away. Do it. <laughs> my fiance is like, Crack please it open, open them up. <laughs> Jesus Help Christ. Help me out. I'm this on my pistachio own. without an opening. I got this. I'm like untangling a bunch of necklaces. I'm like, look, I got something started here. Can you pull on that? <laughs> you know you know a sailor's knot? Look at this. I one, don't know how to handle I've never us. heard a better analogy for someone close to me. <laughs> Than that right there. She goes, I got a little bit, but it's a lot. I need fresh eyes on this. But the premise of like someone in your life died and your memory of them yeah. is what you have more than any other archival documentary evidence. Yeah. And so what you remember, you can also sense it degrading. And so because, of course, like as you said, like your memory of the voice isn't perfect, I imagine. Yeah, the half-life wears out. Do you out. remember your, the sound of your dad's voice? No. Don't remember the sound of my dad's voice. Don't remember the sound of my sister's voice. Wow. And I'm okay with that. And how old were they? And you at I the time? I was 14 when my dad died. He was 48. And I was 16 when my sister died. And she was 28. Mm. And uh, don't remember either of their voices. There is a DVD somewhere that I have of my cousin's fifth birthday party and my aunt transferred it from VHS to DVD, but he doesn't talk on it. He's just at the birthday party in like waves or whatever. But I don't, I kind of like have a sense of his voice, but I think anybody that lost someone young, you kind of just is like, that's part of the territory. You you don't like, I would like to hear my dad's voice again, but not this way, not artificially. Mm. That would be f- gross to me. If he was like, hey, pal, I'd be like, ah. It's like synthetic weed. He'd yeah, be like, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly the, the, the K2 real thing. emotional yeah, yeah, don't give me K2. I yeah. want that real <laughs> shit, dude. I'm trying to, Delta 8. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want that real. I want that real weed. And that's what it is. It just feels like, um, I understand. I under, uh, listen, I'm not knocking anyone that would, 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 uh, this would make them feel good. This would make the, it, sure. People are desperately coping with the most traumatic thing to ever happen to them, and, I presume, in a lot of these cases. And there's people that, that go through losses that are very, very difficult, you know, very, very difficult. And they, and they want some, a piece of the person they lost. And maybe this is the way they do it or whatever. I just personally am like, I've, I know how hard I've had to work to get through the stages of two acceptance of death. And I feel like this would just f*** that up. I wonder if you'd feel differently about losing, if you lost someone now. If you would be interested in this kind of, if your perspective on this would change. I would do it with change. you. <laughs> <laughs> You've got I plenty of footage it, of me I would talking. Do, I, have, I have enough footage of Katie publicly. It's just Sharon tells. Just yeah. like, we've loaded in an archive of Katie talking yeah. about, uh, And yeah. all they have is our argument about uh, sweet and sour versus barbecue. And I'm like, well, I, I, get off of that. I want to hear her say loving stuff, not incorrect things. Uh, correct things. Uh, yeah, honey mustard and barbecue. Um, but it is, I, I'm like, I think now, you're right, I think there would be certain relationships that maybe I would want that more. But I, I immediately, you know, when you brought up the article, the first thought was like, oh, would I want to hear my dad's voice again? And they're... A, you know, knee-jerk reaction. Yes, of course. I haven't heard it. Would love to hear him say bang, bang, Niner gang. Um, but no, I know like my soul and my heart don't need that. It's just like, I- I'll keep my memories. I'll keep, because you also got to work through shit. Yeah. Because people die and then you actually have to examine your relationship with them. Well, look, the, the- <laughs> It's hard for me to hear you talk about people's voices without thinking about how good you are at doing other people's voices. So there was this weird thing. Um, Not to get it really deep into the cords yeah, but there was on a, the back of this computer. I got offered this. I didn't get necessarily offered. It was loosely offered. But um, my buddy Bruce Pritchard, who works at the WWE and also has a wonderful podcast called Something to Wrestle, 
Uh, he works with a guy named Conrad Thompson. Conrad's awesome. He's got a whole podcast network. And, and Conrad had this idea of Lanny Poffo, who recently passed away. Lanny Poffo um, was the brother of Macho Man Randy Savage. And I do an accurate Macho Man Randy Savage. No, you do the world-class, number one ranked. But Thank people you. were like, oh, what? You know, Conrad kind of had this loose idea of like, what if we do a thing with, this is when Lanny was still alive. What if we do a thing with Lanny where he kind of asks Macho? And I was like, Whoa. immediately like, no, I'm very uncomfortable. If someone could do a perfect impression of my dead sister, Michelle, I wouldn't want to do a podcast with that no. person. I wouldn't want to be like, because immediately, how is there not a moment where Lanny Poffel goes like, hey, could you? And I go like, I miss you a lot, Lanny, you know? And he's like, uh, just losing because I would understand that yeah. right where he'd be like right. hey can you bring up this childhood memory we have where he goes I'm sorry I took your ball away yeah knew you wanted to play with it but I wanted to play with it more you know and he's like that's my dead brother so there was this like feeling of like um, <laughs> the macabre where you're like I don't want to <laughs> like, I don't think yes. I want to with this I want to be much. emotionally responsible it's for crazy. this it's crazy yeah. right it's, if someone... well, it's kind of like being um, hey you kind of look like my wife can you? That's exactly. <laughs> can you hold me? Can you imagine me walking? Like, I just meant hold you. Yeah. Uh, can you hold my hold, wean? Can you hold my? Can you hold my bladder and or kidney? Yeah. There was a time uh, back when the WWE Network was around. I went up to Stanford and I was uh, doing this like top ten moments or whatever. And me and another wrestler, Damian Sandow, were doing like competing Macho Man's or whatever. And I was recording my part just in this like dark studio at the Yes Network because like they worked with WWE and we're at the Yes Network, but the cameraman was from WWE. We're doing all this stuff. We film, we end, and then the cameraman, this older gentleman, he goes, I knew Randy. Well, you sound exactly like him. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man. It was just part, it was just like on the drive home where I was like, yeah, there had to be a point where this guy was like, Oh, I'm listening to this guy do my dead friend perfectly. Right. So there, I don't know. There, that's like, um, I don't. You're opening a Pandora's box with yes. this, and it's just kind of like, you don't. You think you know the emotion you're going to get, but you're probably going to get a lot more emotions behind that that you don't see right now. Like, uh, like what I was saying. Immediately, I'd be like, I'd love to hear my dad's voice. And then the second thought was, maybe not. Maybe we keep the dead buried. Yeah. You know. I do feel like, though, there is a product now that I would sign up for, a different form of uh, dealing with grief, where it is Dan Soder um, just playing the role of my dead dad as Macho Man. Yeah, right. I was always very proud of you. Uh, yeah. A couple of those birthday gifts weren't the best, but you, you bought it with your heart. Yeah. When you buy it with your heart, it's the best gift you can have. I love you, son. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, I'll, I'll imitate your dead family members as Macho Man Randy Savage. For a fee. Thank for you. A, for a hefty fee. For a pretty penny. <laughs> I have to go to a very dark place. <laughs> I have to take ayahuasca after. It's and really unlock. taxing on you. <laughs> yeah. I'm your handler. Yeah. Now, Dan will sit with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And tell your your father's feelings for you. Katie's as, selling the membership to this program. Yeah. Look, if you spend this much on it, you're going to use it. Yeah, you're going to use it. If you, if you go if you see want your dead work, you're going to talk to your dead dad you. at 3 a.m., you want your, I'll call you. I'll you want sure. your peepaw to reach out to you as Rodney Dangerfield? <laughs> like, oh, I'm telling you, I never respected you, but now I do. I love you. Well, what I found out at the end of today's show. Oh, did we do three? That were was those three. three things. What were the three things? That was three. Um, we did gym memberships, uh, gym memberships AI, gym and... memberships AI, and then we started with uh, Dan's journey through journalism slash uh, yes. um, Vivek sucking. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, he does stink. You're Frost Nixon. It's gonna happen. Yeah, Line we got up. that. Oh God, I just. <laughs> it, I, I mean, you could <laughs> I... probably look to the production booth, and everyone would agree that would be the episode. Yeah, that would they're be... probably tr actively trying to book it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I've, that it's crossed be... my mind, like, getting him to walk Here's in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's mutually beneficial. Totally. Because you're incredibly intelligent, You and the thing is, you go back with this guy. <laughs> what you, you say? Go Thanks, back... Dad. Yeah. yeah, right? 
Yeah, you're very smart. I know I was a urologist. <laughs> yeah. Lots of water. Yeah. Gonna get kidney stones. The worst pain of your life, I'm telling you. It's the worst pain of your life. Yes, getting him across from me Would in an something. actual, like, uh... W- in, in in an intellectual. I mean, dude, duel. in this studio, none it. of his helpers, mano y mano. He would never agree to do that. He would never agree to it. He doesn't have the to nuts to agree to it. And I'll say that on camera. You don't have the nuts. <laughs> but do it, dude. I would. I want to Don King this. Deference. It would be unstubious. Unbelievable. <laughs> put in, dead, in Don King dead. Put in the AI. <laughs> Unbelievable ubiquitous for two people to clash it only in America. <laughs> only in America. Do it. Have it done, dude. Super fight. Oh, my God. What have you learned? Um, I've learned that I should probably do that episode now. Yes. Yeah. It's a good thing to do. Or just have Dan call the vague as like a prank thing, just I'll as Jason phone call Statham. Him all day. Dude, I'm on the road this weekend. Give me the number. <laughs> I'll start six seven. Do you from still the have his number? In. I can get it. Yeah. yeah. I can get all it. Right. Oh man. I, just I can wanted prank to know, phone but call I can get it. all day. Um, Katie, what did you find out? Today? Nothing. I didn't find out Come anything. On. I found out D- Dan can do voices. <laughs> Pretty, oh, come on, you know that's our love language. <laughs> I was going to say, he's doing all his bedroom moves on a podcast. Yeah, oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to bust out Jason Statham. These are all the men Statham. I sleep with. <laughs> like, How about we go in the bathroom, bedroom and get in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to piss on me. <laughs> time for tinkle time. Let's get the top out, baby. Time for you to make a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> Time for you to sissy on my chest. <laughs> oh my god. That's gross. What did you find out, <laughs> That's Dan? That's gross. Oh, what Dan might now find out, uh, as I have been informed of this fact in my ear, is that Don King is alive. I thought he so. Is. I thought yeah. so. I wasn't gonna say, but I thought well, still, you, you just get, killed that man. It's cheaper to get AI Don King than oh, yeah. the actual oh. one. Yeah, Don King. He charges crazy initiation fees. Yeah, he does. Dude, Don King is, I mean... You can't cancel. I don't want to frost Nixon Don King. No, that right? guy will no. roll I would, even in his old I would, age. I, I would tinkle on myself yeah, in dude. that case. He would eat all of us alive. I don't think I could sell him a gym membership. <laughs> I could try, That'd be a good I challenge. Could. I don't think I could. What did you find out? You have to say something you found out. I miss my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and Don King's alive, I, I kind of want to talk to a computer dead dad. <laughs> Just to say Bang Bang Niner Gang. Cut the I'm proud of you. Yeah, don't even need that. Just this season, how good we're feeling. Mm. I would love for him to say Bang Bang Niner Gang. Guys. Maybe someday. Or do my have my dad do a whole E-40 song? <laughs> I would do Sprinkle Me if we're just off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. How does that go? He's, or I can tell me when to go. Or he's like, ooh. <laughs> or E-40 is my dad. He's like, ooh, I'll be loving you, son. <laughs> dad, can you blow this whistle? Yeah. Can you blow the whistle? Yeah, blow the whistle, Dad. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for coming back. Thanks for having us. I feel That's like all. You're scarred from bringing up the Equinox thing. It just brought me to a dark place. Yeah, I'm now thinking of what I found out today is that somewhere there's a lady who was wondering where that nice young Katie Nolan went. Find her. Oh sh. I want I a reunion episode. Name. Yeah, with you and her. I don't even remember her name. You can remember her name. I'll look through my docs, my documents. Do it. (laughs) Thanks for having us, Pablo. This was so fun. A blast. I can't wait for your debate episode. Yeah. Fuck. Do we even end? So much. (laughs) Does this count? Did we do okay? I think I think we. Overlords. Can the scientists behind the glass yeah. feed Guys, some pellets into the, gonna, into the wall? Pellets, no. They're like, oh, we actually didn't fix that audio issue. We're ready to go now. Yeah, guys, we're gonna come in and change your newspaper on the floor of your kennel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I should point out that Dan was right. Dan Soder was right. He identified the through line of today's podcast, and I'm usually the one who loves identifying the through line of today's podcast. But he identified it as an episode about salesmanship. And that is correct. And so, in honor of the people who helped me move these units, who helped me move these podcasts, my producers, Michael Antonucci, Ryan Cortez, Sam Daywig, Juan Galindo, Patrick Kim, Neely Lohman, Rachel Miller-Howard, Ethan Schreier, Carl Scott, Matt Sullivan, Chris Tuminello, and Juliet Warren... Shout out to you. And our studio engineering by RG Systems, our post-production by NGW Post, our theme song, as always, by John Bravo. Steam Game. Pablo Torre finds out. 
And next Tuesday, a very different episode. So we'll see you then.